So there's a fair bit going on in the United States. And with that, let's join Professor Louis DiCipio, Professor of Political Science at University of California, Irvine. Uh, welcome to the program again. Um, bribes in the Senate, uh, that's a fairly strong allegation. It is indeed. Um, Senator Menendez has faced these uh, accusations before and uh, beat them uh, before a jury. Um, so I think it's early days uh, in this. Um, my suspicion is that he will lose some uh, position committee assignments uh, while this is pending, but probably the uh, government shutdown is a, is a more immediate story for the United States. Oh, absolutely. And uh, the only reason why I touched on that to start with is we just had it. But what about this possible shutdown? What, what do you make of it? <laughs> this is a, a representative of failure of the United States government. Usually these shutdown controversies are when one party has one view and another party has another view. This one, so far at least, is entirely within the Republican Party. Uh, a relatively small group in the House is saying no to anything that their leader, uh, Speaker McCarthy, proposes, um, and he's looking for a compromise uh, within his own uh, within his own constituency. Um, I think, uh, in the short term, at least, it bodes pretty ill for the likelihood that uh, the United States government will be open a week from Monday. This far right uh, mob, if you can call it that, was always going to be a problem. Absolutely, because. Uh, you remember um, Speaker McCarthy had a great challenge in being elected by his own caucus. Um, and part of the agreement that he made was that he could be removed from the speakership um, relatively easily compared to other speakers. Um, that is what is being held over him right now uh, by this, uh, you know, sort of small part of his caucus. Um, the challenge that they face, of course, is that nobody else really wants the job. Uh, so it's very difficult to imagine uh, McCarthy being replaced, at least in the short term, because there's no obvious replacement for him. He's got a difficult path to navigate, hasn't he? And I think he knew that when he took on the job. And as you say, it was quite protracted for him to get the chair. But if he starts leaning on some of these Democrats, as we just heard in the story before, that puts him straight in the headlights. Absolutely. If he can reach a compromise, um, and the Senate has clearly indicated that it's open to a bipartisan compromise, at least in the short term, to keep the government open. Uh, but as soon as he does that, he will face uh, a challenge to his speakership, and that will just absorb all of the energies of the House in the short term. Interestingly, slowing the impeachment um, review um, that they're doing of President Biden, which is also being done for uh, uh, explicitly political reasons. So it's, he doesn't... his job right now is a very challenging one. And unfortunately, the nation is paying the price uh, for this failing within the Republican Party, not just Speaker McCarthy. More support for Ukraine, a Vladimir Zelensky visit to Washington. Uh, what do you make of it all? It looks like a very successful visit. Um, he met the right people. Um, he uh, articulated the needs of Ukraine and at least in the short term, held on to the sort of bipartisan uh, uh, support that uh, support for Ukraine is 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 receiving in Congress. The challenge is that um, again, this sort of rump caucus within the in the Republican Party um, is increasingly becoming isolationist and will put um, funding for Ukraine um, in their sights in the future. For the time being, I think there's a safe bipartisan. Uh, support for uh, continuing current levels of aid to Ukraine, and President Biden has certainly articulated his support. Meanwhile, the race to next year's election continues, the melodrama continues. What's your view on the latest uh, news in the Republican primaries? Well, it seems like um, former President Trump is solidifying his support within, um, within among Republican primary voters. The uh, likelihood of a sort of a single opponent appearing is diminishing. Governor DeSantis is showing his weaknesses. Um, Ambassador Haley, despite doing pretty well in the first uh, Republican uh, 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 presidential debate, um, hasn't been able to get any more support um, uh, among uh, Republican uh, voters. Uh, so, you know, it's it's just the, the weakness of the field opposing uh, President Trump, I think, is manifesting itself, and Trump is taking advantage of that. He's not even campaigning very hard at this point, which is a, a pretty dramatic statement. There will be another Republican um, presidential debate coming up, uh, and that will give an opportunity for somebody to uh, lead the pack, though um, I don't have high hopes that, that any of them will be able to do uh, that much better than they did in the first presidential debate. Of course, former President Trump is not participating in either.
No, absolutely. Let's let's drill down a little bit more on Ron DeSantis because if we go back um, even a, a year ago, he was seen as a bit of a white knight and it really hasn't uh, turned out that way. And there's been a number of reasons why, obviously, uh, whoever's doing his PR hasn't been on, on the money. Uh, money itself has been an issue as well. Well, money has become an issue, but... I. If you look back a year ago, um, if that's our time frame, he had more money than uh, a candidate reasonably needed at that stage, not, not just in his own campaign, but in a, a separate uh, financial organization, a, a political action committee that could support his campaign. He has just proved to be a very bad candidate, and that happens in the United States. You need uh, that ability to be a retail candidate, particularly at the primary stage of the election. And he's just proven very ineffective at connecting to voters. You know, he's investing a lot of time in the state of Iowa, which is very important um, in Republican Party politics. Uh, but those personal meetings don't seem to be adding to his support. Uh, and that's that's really unfortunate for those who oppose former President Trump. There was the expectation that one of those candidates, particularly uh, Governor DeSantis, might be able to get some fire under his uh, under his campaign um, and offer a legitimate challenge to, to the former president. But DeSantis just doesn't seem to have it. And if we look back at you know recent presidential races, there have been other early candidates who were expected to do well and then just didn't prove to have that, that connection to the voters. And DeSantis is the current in that long line of uh, failed candidates. Finally, look, a lot of people say that there's a bit of Teflon about Donald Trump. It just washes off the shoulders. You'd have to say the, the same about President Joe Biden in many ways. Um, he's just sitting there, you know, close to the rails, moving along. Um, he is, and you know, but he's doing it, I think, from a position of relative strength in that he has legitimate accomplishments from the first you know two and a half years of his presidency um that he will be able to point to now he, he faces some challenges ahead the american voters are not giving him credit for reducing inflation or for a you know an economy that is approved improving by sort of many objective standards he needs to be able to make those connections but he hasn't really started his ground campaign yet the test will be you know when he starts going out there selling his accomplishments whether he can build some support, particularly among independents who will ultimately uh, decide the outcome of the uh, 2024 race. Professor Lewis DiCipio, it's always great to have you on the program. Thank you. My pleasure.